The EU Mobility Directive was implemented in Ireland at the end of May by way of the EU Cross-Border Conversions, Mergers and Divisions Regulations 2023. These regulations allow a company to change its place of incorporation within the EU. While other EU member states have allowed this already, this is a new feature in the Irish company law regime. Here with me to discuss the EU Mobility Directive is Michael Moore, Head of Corporate Structuring at KPMG Law, and David Drought, Director in our Accounting Advisory Practice. So Michael, why might a company want to change its place of incorporation? Thanks, Sean. The key reason is if the company happens to be incorporated in a country that's different than where its business, its operations, its investments and assets are located. So a company may want to change its com uh, country of incorporation to ensure that those business and operations, those asset investments, they're better aligned with its country of incorporation. Just remind us by how would companies change that currently and how does the new regime offer an advantage? Traditionally, to move a business or operations from one uh, country to another, it would have required a business transfer agreement from one company incorporated in one country to another company incorporated in the other country. And that would have involved uh, the extension of employees, consultation and notification with employees under the transfer of undertakings regulations. Uh, it's the extension of commercial contracts. It would involve a uh, notice to, and in many cases, consent or approvals from customers and suppliers. And that in effect, that can give rise to significant business disruption and business distraction. Whereas under this new EU cross-border conversion regime, you can literally lift an existing company and through this regime, drop it into another country without the need to move assets, to move people, to move contracts. So it, it, it's very straightforward and very efficient in that way. And so maybe talk us through how the new conversion process simplifies that and what's involved in the process. Under the new regime, that's affected uh, in Ireland by way of a High Court application. So in Ireland, the key document is a common draft terms of conversion, which is approved by the directors and shareholders of the company, which sets out the basis on which the company is going to move, implications for employees, for assets, for creditors. Um, and then in the other jurisdiction, so in the, it, it, there's two countries involved here in the other jurisdiction. Uh, typically, what's required is an administrative application to a company registry or another government body. Um, this is a more tried and tested uh, process in most other EU countries. They've had the ability to re-domicile or to convert companies cross-border for many years. And we've worked with projects with many of our other KPMG law colleagues and other EU jurisdictions where they've helped companies move and cross borders in the past. Understood. So that's the company law aspects. Maybe David, to bring you in, what does a company need to consider from an accounting perspective? Yeah, so from an accounting perspective, companies need to consider what the accounting standards say in those new jurisdictions. So simply put, different jurisdictions may have different accounting standards or gaps. Um, and so if a company needs to convert from their current gap into a new gap or take the decision to move to IFRS, these are projects that require quite a bit of work at times. Um, from experience of working through local gap transition projects, this often involves us linking in with other member firms so we can get that local gap knowledge in order to deliver these projects. Um, and I'd also say even companies now that currently uh, prepare their accounts under IFRS, they may need also to consider what the local company act implications is in those financial statements when they move to this new jurisdiction. So, so quite a bit to consider from a, an accountant perspective. And thinking about that from a tax perspective then as well, I think there can be a range of complexity involved depending on the nature of the company itself. We'd be considering things like corporate tax residence, exit taxes, reorganisation release, etc. There are obviously two sides to this going, the inbound and the outbound. We work very closely with our colleagues in the KPMG network firms throughout the EU and have a lot of experience of working on these sorts of uh, cross-border transactions. Thank you, Michael and David, for your input today. If you're interested in how KPMG can help you in navigating the EU Mobility Directive, or indeed other cross-border transactions, please get in touch. Mm -hmm.